Hello and welcome back to a Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2 updated for Reaper's Due. We are playing Robert Baratheon and we have just sent off our betrothal request to Dorne and we are about to fight off a revolt and we have to select a Kingsguard. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to do. Let's get the betrothal uh, result through soon. I believe Dorne is still considering it. Uh, maybe he isn't. Are we betrothed to her? Oh, we're just betrothed to her. Oh, there is no consideration. Well, that's that bit done. We did that very quickly. Let's go and choose a King's Guard. So, we check our white book here. We'll see that we have four members and we should have um, seven members. Also, um, are we not... Was Barrison Selmy not like a member of the King's Guard? Is he... Did I miss this bit? Because he seems to be rather like missing or dead. Or am I mis mixing up timelines because we started earlier? Probably mixing up timelines. Let's see, uh, sell me. Uh, sell me. I don't see any Barristan at all e existing. Okay. Uh, am I crazy? Or is he... Oh, there we go. Barristan, Barristan the Bold. He died. Okay. He was executed by Ares Targaryen. There you go. That's what happened to Sir Barristan. Right. Let's choose our new King's Guard. So, uh, instead of just choosing it by Selmy, we're going to look for... Um, well, it's going to have to be a male. We know that, and they're probably not going to be married. That seems reasonable, and not going to be a ruler. Um, then, how about Great House? Yes, and we're searching for... Um, and they have to be an adult, so we'll do that. And then we're searching for some, like, formidable fighter. Formidable, formidable fighter. There we go. So, Jamie Lannister is already a member. Um, and then we're looking for people who are religion. So, Bonifer Hasty. Uh, Bonifer the Good, he could definitely be a good, um, he could be a good member of the King's Guard. He's celibate, uh, so that problem's already solved. He is in the Stormlands. I think Bonifer Hasty seems like a great option. We'll appoint him to the King's Guard. Sir Bonifer Hasty kneels. Your Grace, he says. It would be the highest honor to serve in your King's Guard. Okay, we found somebody good. Right, uh, next one after Formidable Fighter is... A skilled, a skilled uh, fighter. There we go. Again, we're looking for people who are our religion. So we'll just sort it by religion here. Uh, or maybe we'll sort it by martial still. That works, martial. So Mandon Moore could be a good member. Skilled. Um, is a veilman, so that seems like an alright option. He is probably in line to something though. He's second in line. He might say yes. Point him to the King's Guard. Sir Mandon Moore kneels. Your grace, it would be the highest honour to serve in your King's Guard. Sir Mandon's father, Lord John Moore, looks on his pride as the newest knight of your King's Guard swore his vows. Oh, good. Um, Parman Crane, he is a Reachman. I probably want to avoid putting Reachman in there, even if he's good. Willem Darry is already a member of our King's Guard. Lynn Corbury, he has Lady Forlorn. Uh, is he in line to... He's second in line. He has a Valyrian steel sword. He is Craven, however. That's going to be a pro I don't think we want a Craven person in our King's Guard. Prince Harry of the Golden Company. Um, probably not. His parent was Randall Strickland, uh, Captain General of the Golden Company. Are th are they called princes in the Golden Company? I don't know. Anyway, um, Roderick Cassell could be a good option. Um, it's. He is probably in line to uh, King's Course. He's third in line. Roderick Cassell doesn't seem like a bad option. We will uh, appoint him to the King's Guard. Your Grace, it would be the highest honor to serve in your King's Guard. Okay, good. We just got three people straight away. Check our white book. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good. All uh, right. Perfect. Uh, we have an open council position for a septum, but we don't have enough money to pay for a new courtier. Um, yeah. Let's see if we can go and beat this rebellion down. So, um, how many men do the Vale have? 36,000. You know what? That'll probably be enough. We're probably not going to lead it. We'll put, um, we'll put Eddard in charge. Uh, although he doesn't lead, he isn't, doesn't have inspiring leaders. Probably not in the center. Uh, we don't appear to have an inspiring leader who's very high up. We'll put Eddard, Stannis, and uh, probably not the leader of our um, 
like our gold cloaks, our commander of uh, King's Landing. How about Gilbert Faring? He seems reasonable. Right, there we go. And then we'll just wait a little bit till our morale comes up and then we'll go fight it. Uh, my courtier, Sir Gawain Wilds, expressed a desire to get married. Oh, you're, I was thinking, didn't we already have this event? Yes, he did marry and she's already dead. Uh, died of poor health. Well, I guess marry again if you want. Alice. Okay. We're just going to avoid fighting so we get our morale, our morale up. Then we're going to go and fight. Yeah, I think our morale's high enough. Let's go fight. We should win 36,000. Should be a fairly easy fight. Also, the game is running really well. I just want to point that out compared to the previous uh, mod version, which is probably due to all of the optimization stuff that was happening uh, with the main game, base game. Uh, Lord Emmon of Golden Grove has declared a war against the tyranny of Lord Paramount Mace on of the Reach on Lord Paramount Mace of the Reach. Okay. Uh, well, it probably serves him right. Uh, we'll head up here. See if we can catch him. They're just assaulting down our territory. That's just not on. Right. We have Cossum. 100% uh, war score. Let's offer our peace and enforce our demands. Right. So disband that army. Uh, and now we can banish him to the Night's Watch. Okay, so we that option does still exist. It just wasn't available for the Targaryens. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, I guess we'll allow you to go to the Night's Watch. There we go. That's fine. And we'll keep going. Split the realm up into nice pieces to make it look a little bit nicer. Golden Grove inherited Golden Grove and other titles from Lord Emmon of Golden Grove, who was slain by Parman Crane. Okay, so that's Mathis Rowan now holds it. Uh, we can righteously imprison Alice. What are you trying to do, Alice? You're trying to kill Lord Stefan of Parchments. Alice? Afraid we're going to have... We can just ask her to leave. I like this. You're not sure when Alice joined your court or what she's doing here, but if you were to ask Alice to leave, the court would feel less crowded. That's, that's very rude, but I like it. Um, that's just imprisoner. Right. We'll hold a trial. Uh, call her for a trial. Definitely. Alice has demanded a trial before the court, which Lord Paramount John shall oversee. To ensure justice is served, she begins to present her, defen uh, present her defense, but the court seemed captivated by it. Even I am almost convinced. Strutting back and forth, Lord Paramount John masterfully questioned the accused, using every superlative available in the common tongue. He captivated the court, ripping through the accused's defense and showing them to be a liar. A verdict has been reached. Lord Paramount John proclaims Alice is guilty. So you can make her a silent sister. I can say I'll be the better person and release her. She walk through the streets naked and back to her cell or we'll have her head on a spike. Um. Well. Yeah. I don't know what we want to do. Probably um, head on a spike would be my guess. Um, except that we have some more options. Uh, so we can hang her. We can behead her. We can have her hung, drawn, and quartered. What are other options? More. Okay. I guess we don't have other options. As well as have her hanged. Um, your Grace, I, Sir Ambrose, sincerely ask to be allowed to pursue a career as Septum of the Faith of the Seven so I can fully dictate, uh, dedicate myself to studying the Seven-Pointed Star and worshipping the gods. So that's Ambrose Darry. Um, Ambrose Darry is first in line to Willem Darry's uh, place. Would he be happy with this? I assume he's already fine with this. We'll give him the gold and he can go and do it if he wants to do it. Right. Um, we have enough to get a Septum now we have one in our court already? Nope. Let's go and get ourselves a septum. We'll employ a new courtier. A holy man. Stannis has arrived at your court. Septum Stannis. Okay. Excellent. Um, we will get a septum in here. And now we can give everyone jobs. Let's see what we want to do. So probably um, Oversea Province seems like the right one for our Hand of the King currently. Master of Laws. Probably going to improve relations. We'll look at that later. Train troops or train children. I probably want train children. But we'll see. Uh, we don't really have any children at our court. Because our brother is in a different court currently. Um, Yeah. We probably just want them to train troops. That seems fine. Or suppress revolts. Uh, train troops probably. Master of coin. Collect taxes. Master of whispers. Can you scheme? And then our septum will be performing charity. Okay, cool. Now we can select um, a crown focus. And this means that it may receive special events and it's more likely to prosper. So that seems good. We'll select King's Landing as our focus. Is there anything we can see on... Oh, right, there we go. Crown focus. We can see it on there. Can we see what other people's focus is? 
Um, your focuses are like if you do you have like a focus on Gash and Gray? Uh, yes, yes, we can. We can see that he has a crown focus on. That's useful to know. Very useful to know. Right. Um, anything else we want to do? Oh yes, we want to check who we wanted to prove relations with. So we'll do that. So let's see who's underneath us here. Um, and who doesn't like us? I think it's probably going to be Dorn we want to improve relations with because um, we are getting that alliance with them, or at least we're getting that uh, we're getting that security of being married to uh, their heir. So maybe improving relations with them seems sensible. Either that or improving relations with the Reach because they have a larger army. Maybe we'll we'll say that we did the um, we've done the betrothal to get our line our. Um, get Dorn's opinion of us up, and we're going to just try and improve relations with Reach through diplomatic means. That seems fair. Okay, and we'll let time move on again. Seems like we actually have a very stable realm, like a surprisingly stable realm. Your Grace, for some time now, I've been in the employ of Lord Dauntis, but now I seek a better station. Uh, that'd be Benedict, would Lord like to join us. Um, we don't really have enough money, so no, sorry. Uh, how's our epidemic looking? So we have winter fever down here, which is still kind of existing. The bloody flux has grown much larger. And then we have another one over here. We have another winter fever over in Karth. Okay. Cool. Uh, my Lee, since I arrived in King's Landing, there has been a shortage of soldiers reinforcing the troop station there. Under our guidance, we believe fame and fortune awaits them. Your humble marshal, Lord Stannis of the Stormlands. The prosperity of the county increases slightly. Oh, cool. Is prosperity a thing that goes into tax or something like that? Um, I would need to probably check King's Landing's yearly tax stuff. Um, uh, that's not really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, like, base tax here where I could... Does it say it here if I hover over it? I'm trying to figure out where prosperity comes in. Um, I don't know. Prosperity, I know, increases certain things. Does it increase... Oh, can we check it in here? There we go. Uh, flourishing gets you 5%. So flour it must have different levels of prosperity. Uh, and flourishing is a level of that. Does that also increase our levy size at all? Um, no, doesn't appear to do that. Um, oh, wait, that says we only have galleys there. Uh, that can't be right, right? Or does the Red Keep only give you galleys and doesn't give you anything else? That could be true. I, I would believe it, possibly, but it seems like it gives us troops. Wait, no, let's have a look at this. Local levies, so it doesn't raise any from us at all. Let's have a look here. Um, yeah, none of these are from the Red Keep, right? These are all vassal levies? I think? It's difficult to tell. Uh, we're going to need to try... Do we have any other provinces? I want, I want to check this out. Also, what... The little crown there is interesting. Um, okay. I guess that mean, means that's where we are currently or something like that. I don't know. Still interesting. Um, let's see. So, what other provinces do we have? We have no other provinces. Can we check it on another province then? Yeah, okay. So, that he definitely has levies properly. Yeah, I was doing it right the first time. I guess it just only gives galleys. Huh. Never noticed that before. Interesting. Under my guidance, my young courtier Tristan is slowly mastering the art of swordsmanship. That's Tristan Riger, uh, who is underneath the Riverland somehow. Okay. Uh, we can take Tristan on as a squire. Do we like him? Sure, he can be our squire. That's fine. I don't really have any problems with that. Lord Paramount, race of the Reach, has inherited the Lordship of Lagood Keep from Lord Horace of Lagood Keep. Okay. Uh, at age 30, Emmon was beheaded on the orders of Lord Paramount John of the Vale. That noise, though, is great. Perfect. Uh, this should be Tywin. Beams at you. Beams you a smile while you... Okay. Tywin beams a smile at you while handing over a pouch of gold. Claims it contains the savings accumulated from hard work and donations from the richer families in your realm. He gave me 300 gold? My lord, that's fantastic. We can hold a tourney. Yes. This is definitely a Robert thing to do. Um, we'll hold a grand tourney for all the realm that costs slightly more gold than we had. This, this is a Robert thing to do. Lord Paramount Mace of the Reach has created the High Lordship of the Rose Road. Okay. God, these noises are great, but also terrifying. 
So that's Liza Meadows uh, died of a disease. Is that the epidemic or is that just a that's just a general disease, uh, a general illness? Okay. It's time to let the tournament begin, and for the next two months, let all show their martial brilliance. Okay. Well, let's see how it goes. It was Lord Gilwood the Fat's turn to joust, but the crowd, to the crowd's shock, he stumbles out to the tourney field, late and clearly drunk, with none of his armour, and only slightly more of his clothing. He tries to mount his horse, but trips and falls comically to the ground, unable even to ride. Gilwood the Fat. Well, you could have got it from his name that this was going to happen. But there is a man that knows how to celebrate. Exactly. Exactly. Well, his, for his solid performance in the lists, Sir Richard Morgan has been knighted by a fellow competitor. Good performance indeed. Yes. Uh, Lord Paramount John of the Vale used a favour on Lord Paramount Quellen of the Iron Isles to force them to join their factions that crown loyalists. Yeah. Okay, we have quite a good crown loyalist faction. My young courtier has finished his education in the intrigues of the court. It turned out less well than expected. He's an amateurist plotter. He's really, really bad at most things, really. Okay. It's Sir Ryman Fraze turned to joust, and he was also drunk. Um, and he also knows how to party, obviously. Oh yeah, we should probably find someone for Stannis to marry, although he's probably beat me to it. Yes, he has. He's gonna marry, uh, Marjorie... He's already married. Marjorie Orm. We weren't even invited to the, uh, wedding. That's awful. So that's, uh, someone from the Reach. Yeah. The first days of jousting is complete, with many lesser riders having already been eliminated from the competition. Now over the coming days, the remaining men shall compete in the final lists, tilting until only one champion remains. So, we can say there are fine jousters, all of them, or we can only watch uh, the last couple. Now let's see who's still in it. Uh, we might notice um, Tigrit Lannister, Jamie Lannister, um, Howland Reed, Jason Malister. Um, Peter Baelish is in this, and Balan Swan, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of people recognize our Lord Commander of the King's Guard. Your Grace, I approve Lord Lydon, one of the participants in the tourney, is cheating. The rivalry between Lord Titus and the supposed cheater is well known, but I can't imagine Lord Titus would lie about something this serious. So, um, Lord Bryden Blackfish, um, you say he's cheating, okay. Uh, I find this unlikely, though. Hmm. So I can say, imprison the cheater, have him disqualified, or I need more proof than your words. Yeah, I need more proof than your words. Definitely. Definitely. Doran Martell imprisoned um, Ulrich Dane. Summer is nearly at an end, and the harvest is upon us. The feasting shall celebrate this time with food from throughout the Iron Throne, including boar, gooseberry, salmon, and lobster, brought to King's Landing as... Part of this, you must decide how much of the harvest is set aside for the winter. Um, you know, just, uh, well, we can skimp on it a little bit. Uh, I made sure the beautiful Felice would be my dinner partner, and during the feast I kept refilling both of our wine glasses. My charm and winning smiles made it impossible for her to stay unresponsive, and it didn't take long until she looked at me with more than interest in her eyes. So that's Felice Pyle, um, married to Lord Denley Thorne. Um, you know what? I'd like to show you the castle, especially in my bedchamber. I took Lady Feliz on a quick tour of the castle and we ended up in my bedchamber. I kissed her and Feliz kissed me back and we ended up on the bed. A night to remember. Well, let's see if the event happened. It did not. Everyone was enjoying a fine display of jousting when Sir Mark Riswell and Sir Balin Swan were paired up. In the last tilt, Sir Mark did not fare well as Sir Balin's lance found a gap in the armour, gruesomely impaling him. With him in the dirt in a pool of blood, it was clear he would die. So that is Mark Riswell dying, and Balin Swan did it. Okay, and he's about to marry a John Quill Karen, interestingly. Uh, most unfortunate. Garion Lannister has, has used his attendance of the Feast of King's Landing to present a petition for justice before the court. He claims that Jamie Lannister sullied his honour by having illicit relations with his wife behind his back, and demands recompense for the slight. Okay, let, let, let's just uh, set the scene. Garion Lannister, married to Cersei Lannister, is unhappy that Jaime Lannister was also sleeping with Cersei. But they're all Lannisters, and this seems ridiculous. Um, well, uh, I, I don't know which one of these we're going to go with. We could say that Jaime must be arrested, but that's obviously going to annoy the Westlands, and that seems like something we would want to avoid doing. Jamie is clearly not guilty of these accusations, would be something we could say, or we can say just pay the recompense. 
Um, we'll say he's not guilty of these accusations. We'll stand up for him. Because he is in our King's Guard and we want to keep his uh, reputation up. And another person came to present justice for the court. He claims that raiders under the control of Lord Tristan um, have been raiding and looting his lands and demands recompense for this molestation of his domain. Well, of course, we're going to ask the Iron Islanders to pay the recompense, though. Yeah. Right. Your Grace, I approve that Lord Samwell, one of the participants in the tourney, is cheating. The rivalry between Lord Randall and the supposed cheater is well known, but I can't imagine Lord Randall would lie about something this serious. As Randall Tarley is uh, saying that Lord Samwell um, Withers is cheating. Okay, so they're both Reachmen. Um... We like Randall Tarley slightly more, I think. Yeah. We can say imprison the cheater, we can have him disqualified, or we can say I need more proof. We'll have him disqualified. There we go. Sir Balin Swan and Sir Ar and Dennis Aaron were next to Jason Liss. After many tills and broken lances, Sir Dennis was eventually on horse, leaving Sir Balin to be the cloud the winner. Well done him. For a solid performance in the list, Sir Ulrich Borrell has been knighted by a fellow competitor. A good performance indeed. After many tilts over several days, only two knights remained undefeated. Lord Commander Allen and Sir Balin Swan faced each other in the final joust. After many tilts of final executed jousting, Sir Balin was eventually unhorsed, leaving Lord Commander Allen to be declared the winner of the tourney. The head of our Kingsguard won the tourney? That is a worthy champion. Fantastic. As victor of my tourney, Lord Commander Allen has the honour of choosing the Queen of Love and Beauty, so he decided to name Matrice as his queen. A good choice, I guess? Um, the war against the tyranny of Lord Paramount Mason Reach has ended in white peace. Uh, okay. Interesting. The tourney is now over. It's time to bask in the glory. Everybody liked it. Fantastic. And I think we're going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.